How did you do? Hopefully you were able to add some cool motion. I have this sequence that I created for the preview of this lesson showing you some different motion of this clip. To start out, what we need to do is take this 4K interview clip and drag it into a new sequence. You might be saying, wait, what, what are you doing? This is a 4K sequence. We need to be able to zoom in on this clip. And if we do, we're going to lose quality. That is true. So we have to change the sequence settings for this clip first. And maybe this is something you forgot to do. Go up to sequence, sequence settings, and then under editing mode, change it to custom so that we can change the frame size to 1920 by 1080. This is still HD and then say, okay, just say, okay. It's going to say that the clip that we added, it's too big for this, this sequence, or it's not the right settings. That's totally fine. And you can see now that I said, okay, our sequence is actually smaller than the footage. This is great because now I can take this clip, go to the motion and zoom out or move it around. So that's what I'm going to do. There's two types of motion I want you to consider adding to your clips to make them more dynamic. One is a zoom and one is just sort of a pan across. And like I mentioned in the last little preview lesson, this is something you can do while you're filming. If you have a dolly or a slider or even a camera with a tripod, you can move around the frame. But when you are shooting an interview and you don't want to mess up the shot, it's hard to do that if you only have one camera. So shooting with two cameras is an option. You can have one camera moving around and the other just stable or shooting with one camera in a higher resolution is if that's possible, shooting in 4K or 2K to get some footage where you can punch in and move around later on. So with this clip, I'm just going to zoom in, start the frame around 57. And I can put my timeline indicator really anywhere and just set a keyframe for scale and position. And then I'm going to drag those keyframes all the way to the left. And then I'm going to zoom in even more and drag down and to the right just a little bit. So moving to the right and move these keyframes to the very end. Now I want to play through this to make sure that it looks good and it's not too fast because you might have motion that's a little bit too fast. And I actually think this is a little bit too fast. So I'm just going to move these keyframes back and change it to maybe 68 and move it just back to the right and back up just a little bit and move these keyframes to the right again. Now the ch percentage change from 57 to 68 is less than 57 to 72, meaning this motion is slower and more subtle. You can still notice this motion and maybe this is a little bit too much, but I, I actually kind of like it. So now I'm going to show you how to add the pan. So I'm going to take this video clip again, drag it onto this sequence. You can see it's already punched in. And I don't want to go any more than 100 on scale. That will mean a decrease, decrease in quality when I export it. So if I go up to 110%, that's basically digitally zooming in on this footage, uh, past the point of its full quality. So I'll just set it at 75 and I can make it move either way, but I think going from left to right might look good. So I'm going to move Anthony over to the right a bit set a keyframe for position, drag that to the beginning, and then just drag to the right just a bit and drag this keyframe all the way to the right. So now if I play through this, pretty darn good. Pretty subtle, but I like that. Now I wanna show you something. This is a cool trick actually. So say I added that position animation, but I think, oh, actually, I think his head is a little bit too close to the top. I want a little bit more headroom. Well, I can't just go in here and drag him down like this because that's setting a new keyframe for position and it's actually making the motion of the video clip go to the left and then down and then continue. What I can do, I'm just going to delete that. What I can do is change the anchor point. The anchor point is what I call the saving grace of affecting or fixing position if I have keyframes. I can actually take the anchor point and move this clip around. Now the anchor point, if you're familiar with Photoshop or Adobe After Effects might make a little bit more sense. It's basically where this 
clip is anchored to. Originally, it's anchored in the middle, but by moving this anchor point setting around, I can move the anchor point basically elsewhere. That's really all you need to know. But what this can do now is I can move it up or down, and it actually keeps the motion of the previous animation, but this whole clip is nudged down now. So I have a little bit more headroom. Or say I want to move it up even more. Just to show you what happens, it moves the whole clip up, but keeps the motion, the left to right motion that we added before. So that's just a quick tip if you get stuck so that you don't have to actually go back and change both of these keyframes for the position. Because sometimes that happens where you make a bunch of keyframes and you do go back and change all of these. Well, you can actually just use the anchor point to do that. So that's how you add motion to a video clip to make it a little bit more dynamic, especially for shorter promotional trailer type pieces. It's kind of a cool way to make your video look even better. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in another lesson.